Hi everyone, welcome to my channel International Storyteller. In this channel, you will find true horror stories worldwide. These stories are for entertainment purposes only. In this video, I will tell you the cursed story of a painting known as The Crying Boy. The Crying Boy was one of a series of paintings made by an Italian painter. But for quite some time no one could find information about this man. He was born in Italy in 1911. It was during the Second World War that he saw the suffering of the wounded or hungry children, who cried painfully in those devastated towns and cities. There is nothing sadder than seeing and hearing a poor child crying. After the Second World War, he moved and settled in Madrid, which is the capital city of Spain. After moving in Madrid, he started painting the images of those suffering and crying young children. Then he sold those paintings to the tourists. He was known as Giovanni Bragolin, as he signed his paintings with these names. Some say Giovanni Bragolin produced at least 65 original paintings in his lifetime. Many of these paintings were the images of homeless street children in Spain. Those paintings depicted a young child crying with a drop of tears. The children represented were often poor and very beautiful. The exact time when those series of paintings were actually done isn't clear. But some experts believe that those paintings were probably completed in the 1950s and widely distributed from the 1950s onwards. Giovanni Bragolin sold his paintings to tourists as a reminder of the suffering of the orphan children of the Second World War. But until 1995, nobody knew who he really was and where he lived. His most popular creations is a painting known as The Crying Boy, which portrays a cute-looking boy with a sorrowful expression of his soul and a tear rolling down his cheek. Mass copies of the Crying Boy paintings were sold across different countries. Many copies of the Crying Boy painting were sold in Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, and even in America. Later, this painting came to be popular all over the world. But the original painting was believed to be put up in some museum. It has been claimed that about 50,000 copies of the Crying Boy painting were sold in the United Kingdom at one time, because young couples in England were in love with this painting and a total of about 250,000 had been sold worldwide. Until the early 1980s, prints and reprints of the Crying Boy paintings continued to be mass-produced. Then many people started claiming that a mysterious fire broke out in those houses that have the Crying Boy paintings. Some people even say that the painting was haunted. While others started calling the Crying Boy painting a curse object. So why is the painting of the Crying Boy called a curse object? Was the Crying Boy painting really haunted? Can a painting cause houses to burn down around it? In order to know this, let us hear the story of the Crying Boy painting. The real story of people calling the Crying Boy painting as a curse object started in the year 1985. On the morning of September 5, 1985, the most popular newspaper in the United Kingdom, The Sun, published a story that caused panic among the public. The story is about a firefighter from Essex, which is located in southeast England, claimed that an undamaged copies of a painting were frequently found amongst the ruins of many burned houses. Then the Sun newspaper published another article with the headline, Blazing Curse of the Crying Boy. The story in this article described the terrible experience of a couple living in Rotherham, which is a town in England. The couple named was Ron and Mary Hall, and their house was destroyed by fire. The cause of the fire was likely done by their grandmothers while making chip, when the chip pan overheated and burst into flames. The fire spread rapidly and destroyed everything on the ground floor of the house. Although the whole ground floor of the house was destroyed, one item remained intact and unburned. The only item that remained unburned by fire inside the ground floor of the house was a copy of the painting known as The Crying Boy. After the house was burned by fire, the undamaged painting continued to hang on the wall which is surrounded by all the devastated burn items. The couple, Ron and Mary Hall, were very upset at their losses. After this incident, the couple made the strange claim that the crying boy painting was cursed, and it caused the fire inside their house, and not the chip pan. Then, different articles were also published by the Sun newspaper, about many burning house related to the crying boy painting. In one story, a firefighter named Peter reported to have removed an undamaged painting from the burnt-out wreck of a house in Yorkshire, which is located in northern England. In the middle of one night, a house in Yorkshire was completely burned by fire. The rooms of the house were turned black, and all the furniture were reduced to ash. The owners of the home lost nearly everything to the fire, except one item, which is the crying boy painting. 
The painting was found very clean and not even blackened by smoke. The boy in the painting seems to be opening his eyes widely and looking out from the wreckage. The firefighter, Peter, said that none of his friends or other firefighters wanted to have the undamaged painting that he found in that burned house. Peter further said that he had attended at least 15 houses on fire across the north of England. In all those fires, everything inside the house was destroyed, and the only thing left untouched by fires is the same painting known as the crying boy. So Peter believed that the burning of all those houses may be caused by the painting, because the painting was cursed, and whoever owned it, their house was all burned. After that, another person, Ron, who was the brother of the firefighter, Peter, spoke out that he did not believe the story about the curse of the crying boy painting. So he deliberately bought a copy of the crying boy painting to disprove the curse of the painting. But a few days later, Ron found his house in South Yorkshire, mysteriously burned down by fire. When he checked, he saw the crying boy painting remained intact and unburned from the ruined house. Since that incident, Ron started to believe that the painting was cursed. The response to the article written by the Sun newspaper was overwhelming, and this went national very quickly. Within a day, hundreds of readers had reached out to the newspaper to learn more about the curse of the crying boy painting. In 1985, a lot of fires broke out all over the United Kingdom and were blamed on the cursed painting. In the rest of the articles, the Sun newspaper wrote a list of stories of many houses mysteriously burned in the United Kingdom that were related to the crying boy painting. In the first story, a woman from the village of Mitcham named Surrey lost her house to a fire six weeks after she bought the painting. The only thing that survived the fire in her house was the painting of the crying boy. In the second story, a woman named Sandra Krask from London said that her sister, her mother, and a friend had all suffered from fires after they bought a copy of the painting in their house. Her sister even claimed to have seen her painting swinging forwards and backwards on the wall. In the third story, one woman from the city of Leeds destroyed the crying boy painting because she blamed the painting for the deaths of her husband and three sons who were killed in a fire inside her house. In the fourth story, another woman from Forest Hill named Woodward also destroyed the painting of the crying boy. She believed that the painting was responsible for the loss of her son, daughter, husband, and mother in separate fire-related incidents. In the fifth story, a man named Malcolm Vaughan from the village of Churchdown helped to destroy the crying boy painting of his neighbor. But when Malcolm Vaughan returned home, he found that his own living room was burned by fire for unknown reasons. The firemen who extinguished the fire were also unable to explain the cause of the fire in his room. In the sixth story, a 67-year-old man named William Armitage from the town of Weston Super Mare died in a mysterious fire that engulfed his house. Later, it was discovered that the crying boy painting was found lying undamaged beside the dead body of the old man. One of the firefighters who extinguished the fire said, he never believed in the cursor superstition up until this incident, because when he came across the burned and ruined items inside a house, the only thing that hadn't been touched by the fire was the crying boy painting, and it seemed very strange. Then, on October 21, 1985, a pizza restaurant in Norfolk was destroyed by fire, including every painting on its walls except the crying boy painting, which remained in clean condition. On October 25, 1985, a family from the town of Heswall bought a pair of the crying boy paintings. They hang one of the paintings in the living room, while the other painting was hanging in the kitchen. Then a few days later, the gas in the kitchen exploded, destroying the house completely. These were just some of the articles that the Sun newspaper wrote about houses in the United Kingdom that are being burned and were related to the crying boy painting in 1985. In the above incident, many firefighters refused to have a copy of the crying boy painting due to fear that it might also burn their house. Thus, the cursed story of the crying boy painting was widespread across the United Kingdom and different regions in Europe. After the stories were published in newspapers, many people were panicked and confused because many of them also had the crying boy painting in their houses. Soon many people from all over Britain have reported about their houses being burned by fire under the same circumstances as mentioned in the articles published by the Sun newspaper. It seemed that everyone knew someone affected by the curse of the painting. One woman named Rose Farrington from the city of Preston in England wrote in a letter published by the Sun newspaper. Rose Farrington wrote that, since she bought the crying boy painting in 1969, her three sons and husband have all died. 
She often wondered if the deaths of his family members were done by the curse of the painting. In another story, an old woman who lives in the United States said that she bought the crying boy painting at an auction 20 years ago. She fell in love with the boy in the painting because it looked exactly like her grandson, who had been abandoned by his parents. But she didn't hang the painting on the wall, instead, she put the painting in the closet along with the other paintings. Then, 20 years later, her home was mysteriously burned down by fire. Her house was completely destroyed and burned, including all the paintings in the closet except the crying boy painting, which remains unburned. The old woman believed that the fire in her house was caused by the crying boy painting, because the boy in the painting was upset of being in the closet. Because of all these stories, there were a lot of very nervous people who owned the crying boy painting in their house, and they immediately wanted to get rid of the painting. People began to try to dispose of the paintings themselves by setting them on fire, but they found that even when deliberately setting the painting on fire, it remained unburned and unharmed. While other people believed that if they destroyed the painting, then it would bring bad luck to them. Then various firefighters came up with their own theories in order to disprove the cursed stories of the crying boy painting. And due to widespread anxiety among the public, the Fire Service Department of Yorkshire in England was forced to release a statement about any connection between the mysterious fires in the house and the painting. The firefighters explained that one of the most recent fires had been caused by a heater when it was left too close to a bed. Another firefighter also pointed out that there was a reasonable explanation in all cases of houses being burned by fires. He further said that most cases of houses burned by fire are due to human carelessness or electrical faults. But the head of the Yorkshire Fire Brigade told the national newspapers that the crying boy paintings were frequently found unharmed in the ruins of houses that had been mysteriously burned to the ground. When journalists asked him if he thought that the painting was curse and could somehow start the fires, he refused to comment. Then a Rotherham fire station officer named Alan Wilkinson, who had 33 years of experience, said that the fires were not due to curse or supernatural events. Since 1973, he has personally attended more than 50 houses on fire related to the crying boy painting. He admitted that of all the fires that broke out was usually human ignorance or carelessness. So he finally dismissed any connection of the fire with the painting or any supernatural event. But Rotherham Fire Station Officer Alan Wilkinson had no explanation for the survival of all the paintings of the crying boy from those fires. However, when his colleagues presented him with a frame of the crying boy painting, he immediately returned the painting, saying, no thanks, you can keep it. Then another woman took out the crying boy painting from her house and handed over the painting to the Rotherham Fire Station officer, Alan Wilkinson, as a gift. This time he took the painting from the woman to his work and he hung the painting on the office wall of the fire station. The reason he hangs the painting on the office wall is to keep an eye on the painting. The same day, an oven in the upstairs kitchen of the office was overheated, which resulted in burning down the kitchen. So his superiors ordered him to immediately remove the painting from the wall of their office. Similarly, Chief Divisional Officer of the Fire Station, Mick Riley, said that a huge number of copies of the Crying Boy painting were prints and had been sold in different regions. But any connection between the painting and the fire inside the house is purely coincidental. He further said that fires cannot be started by painting or images, but by careless acts of humans. However, Mick Riley wouldn't accept a copy of the Crying Boy painting as a gift, saying his wife wouldn't like it in their house. For this reason, no firefighters would ever want to take any copy of the Crying Boy painting in their own home. Some people also claimed that bad luck happened to those who tried to paint the exact image of the Crying Boy painting. In the 1970s, a tragic incident happened to an artist when he painted the Crying Boy painting. The artist was able to paint the image of the crying boy painting with such perfection. His painting was so good that it almost looked exactly like the original painting. Then, one day, the artist went on a vacation with his friends to a beach. While they were all swimming in the water, he was killed by drowning. That time his friend thought it was just an accident. But after they heard about the cursed stories of the crying boy painting, they came to realize that the artist's death must be due to his painting of the same image of the crying boy painting. The new painting still remains hanging on the wall of his house. A lot of tragic things also have happened in his house, but his death was the most devastating.
Many people also attempted to destroy or get rid of the crying boy paintings because they knew it was only a matter of time before disaster struck them. So those people who own a copy of the crying boy painting were helpless and desperate to get rid of the painting. Soon a news came about an Italian restaurant in Great Yarmouth, which is a town in England, was burned by fire. Later, when the firefighters checked the ruin of the restaurant, they found the crying boy painting had survived a fire and was found undamaged. After hearing this news, Kelvin McKenzie, who was editor of the Sun newspaper, thought that was enough and came up with a solution. He announced that if anyone is worried about the crying boy painting hanging in their home, then send it to the Sun newspaper office immediately. He will destroy all the paintings once and for all, and if any curse happened for destroying the paintings, that will be upon him. The next day, the Sun newspaper office received about 2,500 copies of the crying boy painting. Then, the newspaper office staff were left with a problem of its own. They don't know what to do with the 2,500 copies of various paintings of the crying boys that had been sent to them for disposal. A few days later, the Sun newspaper published a frightening solution to the public to get rid of the painting. Their plan was to burn all the paintings of the crying boy on the coming Halloween day. So, on Halloween day, October 31, 1985, the Sun office staff organized a mass bonfire for people who wanted to dispose the painting. More than 2,500 copies of the paintings were collected together by the newspaper staff and burned under the supervision of the fire brigade on Halloween day. At first the painting refused to burn, but using petrol, and with a lot of effort, the painting could indeed be burned and destroyed. Then, the Sun office declared in their newspaper that they had alone lifted the curse of the crying boy painting. Many also believed that the burning of the painting on Halloween day had exercised the curse of the crying boy painting. So, for a quiet some time, it seemed as the curse had vanished, but the curse of the crying boy painting didn't end there. There are still many copies of the crying boy painting left in many houses in the United Kingdom, as well as other countries. In recent years, it has even seen a resurgence of the curse of the painting in the UK once more. Many news stories started to resurface about houses being burned by fire that are believed to be done by the crying boy painting. So, why would anyone want a printed copy of the crying boy painting? People who have a copy of the crying boy painting know that they are actually at severe risk of injury and bad luck. There is also a large chance that their house might be burned down due to the presence of the painting inside their house. So some people risking their life by buying the crying boy painting is because the painting is filled with hidden messages. This encourages some people to buy the painting of the crying boy, even though the painting is believed to be cursed. Is there any way to break the curse of the painting? There are only two ways to break the curse of the crying boy painting. The first one is to get a crying girl painting and place it near the crying boy painting. A crying girl painting is similar to that of the crying boy painting. The only difference is that the crying girl painting has a young girl in the painting instead of a boy. It is believed that placing the crying boy painting together with a crying girl painting will bring good luck by cancelling out the bad luck. The second way to break the curse is to be kind to the crying boy painting. It is believed that being kind to the painting can also bring good luck instead of burning the house. But in most cases, after someone buys the painting, they will take it home and hang it on the wall. Then, a few months later, most of them ignored the painting, which resulted in all their houses being mysteriously burned by fire. The strange thing is that all the houses were completely destroyed, except the crying boy painting, which survived without a scratch. So, why did the crying boy painting survive the fires after everything around them was destroyed? What could be the reason behind all this? In order to know this, let us continue hearing the story. A British writer and comedian named Steve Punt investigated the curse of the painting. In the 1980s, he attempted to track down the homes involved in fires by the crying boy painting. After that, Steve Punt tried to apply a little bit of scientific method to solve the case. After further investigation, he claims to the conclusion that the paintings don't get burned for two main reasons. The first reason is that the painting is put on a high-density hardboard, which is difficult to burn. And the second reason is that the painting itself is coated with a liquid coating material called varnish or lacquer, which is slightly resistant to fire. In addition to this, when a fire broke out, the string holding the painting to the wall would be the first to burn. This would result the string to break and cause the frame of the painting to fall to the floor. 
then the front of the painting would face down toward the floor, and thus nicely protected the painting from the fire around it. Although sometimes the paintings of the crying boy were found unharmed while still hanging on the wall after everything else in the house had burned to dust. This included all other paintings similar to the painting of the crying boy. Other paintings did not survive the fires if they had been exposed to the same circumstances as the painting of the crying boy. Thus, this last theory contradicts the theory given by Steve Punt, and it also fails to explain why. Many firefighters themselves were also unable to come up with any real reason why the paintings didn't burn. Those who believed in superstition claim that the tears running down the boy's cheeks in the painting put out the flames that attempted to burn it. That is why the painting was not burned by fire. Then, in 2002, a reality TV show known as Scream Team chose a team of six young people to travel around Britain and investigate the cursed story of the crying boy painting. The team were deployed to the town of Wigan in England to meet the owners of a transport cafe, Eddie and Marion Broccoli, who had recently experienced a devastating fire. The couple claimed that the painting was one of the last surviving copies of the crying boy painting. After the cafe's owner's house was completed burned, the crying boy painting had been found unharmed in the fire and continued to hang on the blackened wall. The husband, Eddie, believed that the fire was a mere coincidence, while his wife, Marion, believed it was done by the painting and wanted the painting to be destroyed. Then the six young people hired a spiritual medium to connect with the spirit world inside the burn house of the couple. The spiritual medium was able to detect that the burning of the cafe's owner's house has a direct link with the painting of the crying boy. The spiritual medium also reported a sensation of burning and images of a car being crashed. At the end, the painting was soaked in petrol and set on fire. It took more than three attempts before it eventually caught fire. Then in 2010, a video made by the British writer and comedian, Steve Punt about setting fire to the crying boy painting, was uploaded on YouTube. He set the crying boy painting on fire, starting from the bottom. By the time the fire burns out, the bottom corner of the painting is black and due to burn, but it remains largely intact, and the face remains untouched. This proved that in order to burn or destroy the painting, lots of efforts will be required. So why is this seemingly innocent painting believed to be cursed, and who actually is this little boy in the painting? There are many theories about the origin of the curse of the crying boy painting. Some say the little boy family placed a curse on the artist of the painting. While others claim that the little boy had died in a fire and his spirit was trapped in the painting. But the most popular story is about a child named Don Benillo. Until the 1990s, the reports of the fires caused by the crying boy painting were occasionally reported. But no one has ever found out just who was the child in the painting. Then in 1995, a paranormal investigator named George Mallory, who is also a retired school headmaster from Devon, southwest England, claimed to have uncovered the truth behind the origin of the painting. George Mallory said that he was able to track down the artist who painted the crying boy painting. The artist of the crying boy painting was an old Spanish artist named Franchet Serville who lived in Madrid, which is the capital city of Spain. But the paranormal investigator George Mallory told everyone that it was very difficult to trace the artist, Franchet Serville. Because the artist Franchet Serville used different names that were not known to common people. The artist Franchet Serville has many other different names, such as Giovanni Bragolin or Angelo Giovanni Bragolin, or he may even have many other names. Franchet Serville told that all of his paintings were mostly the images of dead children. This led others to believe that the paintings of Franchet Serville were cursed or haunted in some ways. The reason why Franchet Serville likely used different names is because many people considered his paintings as being cursed objects. Some people also believed that Franchet Serville himself was cursed as well. This is why most of his paintings were signed as Giovanni Bragolin instead of his actual name, Franchet Serville. Then Franchet Serville died in the year 1981. So the paranormal investigator, George Mallory, probably met with Franchet Serville before 1981. But why George Mallory does not reveal Franchet Serville, who was the original painter of the crying boy painting to the public until 1995, is still not known. After the paranormal investigator George Mallory met with Franchet Serville, he came to know about the origin of the boy in the crying boy painting. The boy in the crying boy painting was actually a troublesome little boy who lived in the street of Madrid. 
The artist Franchet Serville found the little boy wandering around the street in the city of Madrid in 1969. The little boy never spoke and had a very sorrowful look in his eyes. Then Franchet Serville wanted to adopt the boy, but a Catholic priest warned him that wherever the boy went, fires broke out. The priest also told him that the boy named was Don Benillo. Earlier, Don Benillo's parents had also been killed in a fire. Then he had run away from his home after witnessing his parents die in the fire. Many believed that the little boy Don Benillo was responsible for killing his parents in the fire. Because of this incident, the little boy was hated and disliked by everyone in Madrid. So, the priest warned Franchet Serville again and again not to adopt the child, because wherever the little boy settled, fires of unknown origin would mysteriously break out. That is why the villagers also called the boy, Diablo which means devil. But Franchet Serville did not believe the story and ignored the priest's warning because he considered those stories were just superstitious. Despite the warning by the priest, he felt pity for the little boy, Don Benillo. So he decided to adopt the little boy and looked after him. Some days later, Franchet Serville painted the image of the little sad orphan boy, Don Benillo, with a tearful expression on his face. Then, mass prints of the paintings were sold across Europe. By selling the painting, Franchet Serville became fairly rich. Later, the painting of the little boy came to be known as the crying boy. But one day, his studio was mysteriously burned to the ground. Franchet Serville was ruined, and he started remembering the priest warning to him, that is, wherever the boy went, mysterious fires broke out. So he accused the little boy, Don Benillo, for burning his studio. Then he chased away the little boy from his home. The boy ran off crying and was never seen again. Since this incident, many reports of fire caused by the crying boy paintings came from all over Europe. Many people already know that the little boy, Don Benillo, was cursed, and wherever he settled, mysterious fires broke out. In a similar way, the painting containing the image of the little boy, Don Benillo, was also cursed, and whoever owned a copy of the painting, their house got mysteriously burned by fire. Because of this reason, the artist, Franchet Serville, who painted the crying boy painting, was also regarded as a curse or evil. So, no one contacts him to paint anymore. Some people would even avoid looking at his paintings. Then, in 1976, a car exploded into flames after crashing into a wall on the outskirts of Barcelona, which is a city in Spain. The victim's body was burned beyond recognition. When police officers looked inside the glove compartment, they found part of the victim's license that was only partly burned. The name on the license was a 19-year-old teenager named Don Benillo. No family or relatives ever came forward to take the dead burned body of the 19-year-old teenager, Don Benillo. This proved that the 19-year-old teenager, Don Benillo, who was killed in the car accident, was an orphan. So, could this have been the same little boy, Don Benillo, who had been the subject of the crying boy painting eight years earlier, is still a mystery.